Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Calling the meeting to order. Mr. Lashley, you have the honor. Oh, thank you. Uh, if everyone would please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for another wonderful day that you have created. And dear Lord, please give us the strength and wisdom and character to do the business for the people of Alamance County. And dear Lord, we know that all things are possible through you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to amend the agenda just very, very briefly. Uh, before we start the agenda, I'd like to recognize Dr. Harrison. And if you'll come forward, please, sir. Is this good or am I in trouble already? <laughs> 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 I'm really scared and caught up in this <laughs> We just welcome you back and very, very pleased that uh, the transition is going to be smooth under your guidance. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate what you folks do. It's a uh, difficult, difficult job. And, uh, any public uh, service is. Um, I think my four years when I was here before, we established a good relationship mm -hmm. with the, uh, the commissioners. Uh, I think we, we had a, a good understanding that I wasn't going to get everything I wanted. I wasn't always going to be 100% happy, um, but they were going to do what they could, and they did. And uh, so I don't think you were here at that time, Steve, I think you came on right after. That's uh, right. Or right before I left. But I think that um, we were able to do some good things. We had that uh, vision that this community adopted before I got here, and the board charged me with implementing that vision, and the very first year I was here, you guys funded our budget at 100%, because it was all tied to that. That vision we talked about the strategic plan. And I think my presentation to you was, you know, this is what it's going to cost to do what this county, this community said they wanted to do, and we can't do this in a year. But we can maybe come up with a six to ten year plan. And we kind of got started on that, and then things happen as they, as they always do. But you know, all that to say, I look forward to working with your, your new manager, had good relationships with Craig. And with um, Brian, when they were, were here, and uh, look forward to getting to know her. Uh, we're, we're working on a meeting, and I told her that I wanted, I would yep. like it sooner than later. Yep. Um, because I like to have conversations uh, at times other than when I'm standing here asking for dollars. So you know, thank you for what you do. Um, I'm accessible, and uh, I know that Thompson lady sitting down the end. <laughs> I know you have missed me. <laughs> the only reason I came back. <laughs> what about alligators? <laughs> but you know, it's so funny, and I'll, and I'll sit down. I, I talked in the, uh, when I interviewed with the board last week, and uh, Mr. Engel wasn't able to be there. But I, I talked about sitting down with him, when he was sitting in your chair, and with Craig in my office, with Pam, she was our chair, and we talked about that bond issue. And a lot of people said that what we couldn't do in this community, but um, basically two of them <coughs> agreed this was, if we could make it happen for, we make it happen to $150 million. And I sat in with my senior staff and they said, you know, you don't know how many county, there's no way. I said, well, I'm sitting down with our board chair, the county manager, and the chairman of the county commissioner, and they say we can make it happen. And I said, I know we've got the business community behind us, we can make it happen. And, uh, and we did. So I think what um, I look forward to reestablishing uh, a lot of the relationships I have. I look forward to uh, working with some of you again and, and, and 
beginning to work with, uh, with others. And uh, my only interest is taking care of your kids. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And good to have you back. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion? Uh, do I have a motion for approval of the agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Public speakers. Again, you have three minutes time, um, and you can see it on either end. Um, and if you get too far out of the line, I will gather you down. <laughs> Don't anticipate that at all. That was supposed to be funny. You can laugh now. <laughs> okay, Robert A. Elvis. Did I pronounce that correctly? Thank you, sir. Good evening, Alamance County Commission. My name is Robert Albus. Uh, I live in the city of Graham. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you tonight. Um, I'm a teacher at Williams High School, also president of the Alamance Burlington Association of Educators. Um, I wanted to thank you for your conciliatory attitude and relationship with the school board as of late, um, particularly at your last meeting, your interaction with Greg Cook and the request for uh, funding on uh, the roofs of our schools and the roof maintenance plan. You all acted uh, very quickly on that in order to make sure that our school system can get the funding that it needs uh, to address the roofing situation that we have in our district. And also at that same meeting as well, uh, Sheriff Terry Johnson came up with concerns about the funding of the Sheriff's Department as well. And you all were very uh, responsive to his concerns as well. And I hope that uh, that same conciliatory attitude will continue into the budget season, uh, season, especially with regards to our school system. And I think that we're off to a great start here with Dr. Harrison here tonight um, and that y'all can work together to ensure that our schools are fully funded this year as well. Um, because as y'all know, perhaps better than a lot of folks, um, our schools have a lot of needs and um, y'all are some of the people best suited to be able to meet those needs as well. Um, one option that I wanted to bring up is that, uh, you know, when we're talking about the county budget, oftentimes taxes arise as well. Um, one option has been proposed before, and then I'll propose again as well, is the idea of uh, putting a sales tax before the voters again. Um, so, you know, property taxes are the primary way to fund county government. Um, however, in that same bond referendum that in which the bond was passed, the sales tax was voted down. Um, at this moment, it's possible that a sales tax could pass if y'all were willing to put it on the ballot for voters in November. And the particular advantage of that that I see is that then we can have folks from outside Alamance County help pay for the cost um, of helping support our county government. Our county has a lot of visitors with Elon University, Tanger Outlets, soon to be the Bucky's gas station as well. Um, that's a great way to offset the cost for Alamance County taxpayers and instead help others share the burden. Um, so just one option that I wanted to put before you tonight. Um, but thank you for the work that you do and for your public service. What do you teach? Uh, social studies. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Albright. <laughs> Not used to seeing you with a hat. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Jim Albright, and I work as a grant coordinator for Alamance Citizens for a Drug-Free Community. Our work can be summed up in one word, prevention, which is the action of stopping something from happening or arising. How do we do this? By helping build protective factors and helping reduce risk factors in our community. Over the course of the past three months, we have had one-on-one -on -one conversations with community stakeholders concerning youth prevention education programs. We asked them, what's working, what's not working, and what could be better? One common theme that emerged in our conversations was in regards to prevention is that more is better. As you know, D.A.R.E. is taught in most fifth grades in Alamance counties by SROs in Burlington and in county schools, but not currently being taught in the elementary schools in Graham. Karen Webb, our executive director who was here, and I have been fortunate to speak at some of the D.A.R.E. graduations. In addition to some of the cool swag you get for being a speaker at, at D.A.R.E., uh, we liked hearing the powerful essays that were written and uh, read by the students <coughs> about reasons why you should stay away from drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. 
I recently met with a sixth grader who told me they quit vaping in the fifth grade because of DARE, which <coughs> demonstrates some of its effectiveness. During our conversations, we learned that the Mebane Police Department is teaching a curriculum too good for drugs at their elementary schools and at Hallfields Middle School. We had previously purchased and worked with this curriculum and are pleased to be able to cover all costs to bring in a trainer from the Mendez Foundation to our community for a one-day training on May 15th at um, probably going to be First United Methodist Church in Elon. This effort is not to compete with DARE, but rather to offer another youth prevention education resource to our community, one in which you do not have to be a law enforcement officer to implement. A little bit about Too Good for Drugs, it is an evidence-based K-12 through substance use prevention education program that targets, targets development of self-efficacy and interpersonal skills and educates youth about the effects and consequences of substance use. It's based on sound development and prevention theory and uses strengths-based approach to mitigate risk factors and build protective factors. Consists of 10 lessons, 30 to 50 minutes, and has gone through a rigorous independent evaluation studies to measure their effects on students' skills, attitudes, intentions, and behaviors. For over 45 years, the C.E. Mendez Foundation, based in Tampa, Florida, has served thousands of school districts, law enforcement agencies, and community agencies in all 50 states with the nationally recognized and award-winning Two Good programs. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Perfectly timed. <laughs> Karen Webb. Chair Paisley and County Commissioners, good evening. My name is Karen Webb, and as Jim Albright alluded, I'm the Director of Alamance Citizens for Drug-Free Community. Again, our work is around prevention, and reducing risk factors and building protective factors in our community. I just wanted to share a little bit of uh, information that uh, dovetails with what Jim said, that we are gonna be implementing with uh, approval through the school system, hopefully in a, a month or two, a survey, a student risk survey called the PRIDE survey, which stands for Parents Resource Institute for Drug Education. This is a nationally acclaimed uh, survey that we've actually been using in our school system for about 12 to 14 years. And it gives us a chance to gauge students' substance use behaviors, but also their thoughts and opinions and what they're experiencing related to school climate. It's a valid and reliable instrument that's based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And we're real excited with the cooperation uh, again this year to work with our schools to implement this survey to a sample of sixth grade, seventh grade, ninth grade, and twelfth graders in all of our middle schools and high schools. This information gives us a good idea of you know where students are, what they're thinking, what their needs might be. It's great information uh, to help shape prevention activities, not only within the school system, good information for student support services, such as counselors, social workers, nurses, but also health teachers, SROs, and others uh, that you know, have to meet the needs daily, not only of the academic needs of our students, but also the social and emotional issues that our kids are facing today. Um, again, this survey is nationally recognized, has been used with well over 80,000 students across our nation, and it's totally anonymous, and any student can opt out at any time. So no student will be identified as far as his or her answers, but again, it gives us a really good snapshot. We do know that, as you well know, that our students, our young people are challenged every day, as we all are, with marketing, social media, advertising by industry such as the alcohol industry, tobacco industry. We know that our young people are using at an alarming rate e-cigs, vaping devices, not only for tobacco products, but all kinds of other maybe legal and or le illegal substances. And these children are using these devices 
in the elementary schools. We know that for a fact. So the kids are being challenged um, by lots of pressures outside our community as well. Just wanted to share this information. I don't have an ask for you other than to thank you for your support of our young people. Thank Amy, you. thank you. Mary Joyce. Let me remind everyone, including the speakers, county commissioners have an opportunity to comment about your speech or, or your comments at the end of the meeting, but we cannot procedurally do so while you're speaking. Uh, just want to take a little bit here. I've been hearing this for the last month, and I'm really tired of hearing it. <laughs> I've been hearing the commissioners, or a commissioner, keep going on radio programs, uh, public meetings and saying that nobody in Alamance County got a reduction in taxes. Nobody. There was nobody that got a reduction in taxes. Well, just to the, I'm going to read off a few that did, okay? And this is not including business personal property. Lowe's on Huffman Mill Road got a $12,000 decrease in taxes. Lowe's in Mebbin got a $22,000 decrease in taxes. Walmart on Graham Hopedale got a $30,000 decrease in taxes. Mebbin Walmart got a $50,000 decrease in taxes. Target got a $30,000 decrease in taxes. Belts got $11,000 decrease in taxes. Maybe less than that because I think they appealed and y'all dropped it to 61 cents. <laughs> J.C. Penney, approximately $11,000 decrease in taxes. Dillard, $17,000 decrease in taxes. And the best of all is Lytle, who is undervalued by about $50 million. It got a $120,000 tax decrease this year from last year. This is after a reval, $120,000. There's a little place called Spotsville, Spotsylvania, Virginia, built a Lytle, almost dug the ground at the same day that we dug the ground here. You know what their value on Lytle is just for real estate and property? No, no personal property. A mil hundred million dollars. You know what? They've had one appeal. But their person in their office, who is a commercial appraiser, went to the Board of equalization when they walked out they were happy been happy ever since their tax rate is 77 cents they're not getting appeals and if they do get one they're not scared they don't run like little rabbits we can't do this we are losing millions and millions of dollars because we don't have qualified people in our tax department and I don't know how many times i got to say this. I've been saying it for the last year. And y'all just, you know, you come out and say, well, this is all cleared up. We got this all cleared up. Nothing's been cleared up. We don't have any appeal. You know, well, we can't do this because they're all going to appeal. Big deal. If you got qualified appraisers in your office here, they will understand. You know how they do a, a lot of on an income basis. We don't even have anybody who knows how to appraise a property on an income basis. So, I mean, I don't know how much time I got left, but folks, we need to find our tax money. That's all we need to do, not keep raising taxes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to ask our health director to stand up. Is he still in the room? This gentleman just got back from Israel, did his civic duty, and we're proud of you. Good stuff. Thank you. Good stuff. Okay, consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion second. Any comment? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. I would comment uh, on item 5A2. That individual is from Guilford County. I know we just passed a motion, but 
Uh, that is the exception because of the um, area that she's in and the requirement to have that as uh, approved as out of county. Okay, Alamos uh, County School System. Mr. Hook. Can we vote on the agenda? Chairman, Mr. Paisley, Board of Commissioners, uh, I'm here on behalf of the school system to request uh, some funding. Um, uh, the funding I'm requesting uh, is to cover some projects to expedite uh, roofing projects and an HVAC project. Um, so I, I saw on the uh, agenda that um, it is outlined that uh, we're asking for capital reserve funds and for uh, movement of some of our bond funds, so I wanted to explain what we're trying to do. Uh, the B. Everett Jordan roof project uh, is uh, near to the top of the list, and I see that uh, they have on the screen uh, the presentation that Mr. Baker had shown a couple of meetings ago, and you can see B. Everett Jordan is number four on that list. Uh, it's ready to go out to bid, so we need the funds uh, in place in order to, to bid that project. So the funds that we need for that project are $1,214,055, uh, and I'm requesting that to be moved from capital reserves. Uh, our board had approved that request, and we also discussed that at, o at OSC, and they approved for that to come here to this board. Uh, the other request that I have, uh, the Graham High School roof project we have, we have accepted a bid and we have a contract for that project. Uh, that's number one on the list for roof needs, but you can see over on the HVAC needs column from Mr. Baker's presentation, uh, we're short $650,000 in order to be able to do the HVAC project, which really needs to be done simultaneously, simultaneously with the roof project. Uh, so what I'm requesting in order to be able to uh, um, move $650,000 to the Graham High School roof project. Uh, we have uh, um, the Hall River roof project under, uh, under contract. They've started work there, and we are $468,665 under budget. I'd like to request that we move, move those bond funds from the Hall River project over to the Graham High project, which would leave us short of um, $181,000, which I'm requesting that we move that from capital reserves so we would have $650,000 in place uh, to supplement where we're under budget at Graham High by $900,000. So that would give us enough money to go ahead and, and uh, work with the HVAC project there. Can you give us a time frame? Well, the, the BEJ roof project is ready to go to bid. So uh, if we were to get those funds uh, and get back with REI, who is managing that project for us, at least the, the bid documents, then they would prepare the bid documents and put that out to bid. Uh, so I think we could you know, be looking at taking bids in about 30, 30 to 40 days from now. And this would just expedite projects. And the other upside to doing this, this would free up uh, between both of these projects uh, nearly $2 million dollars which would have been in the bond sale uh, in May, which then could be used to go on deeper into the HVAC and roof, roof list um, at that time. Uh, and then the HVAC project at Graham, we've discussed in here the design and the length of time that it takes to do design for roof projects. That's not the case for an HVAC project like we're looking at at Graham High. We're looking at taking the rooftop units off of the roof on buildings A, B, C, and D. That's how they call the buildings at Graham High. And it's a, it's a simpler project, and the design on that would not take long at all. So I would think that we'd be able to get get that project underway uh, probably in about 30 to 40 days as well. 
So we'd be just picking up about hopefully two, at least two months, um, getting ahead of, of the bond projects by doing these things. Ms. Thompson. I'm just glad to hear you say everything. <laughs> I heard it last week and I'm glad to get to say it again. One, one down, one to go. We just keep getting through it. I think that's wonderful. Mr. Lashley. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hook, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I can definitely, definitely see that you've made some progress since the last time we spoke, and that's always a good thing. I do want to ask a very sophomore question, though, so don't laugh at me when I ask you this. Hall River Elementary, can we, can we say for certain that that project is completed? It's not complete. It's under contract, and they've started work on it. But it's under contract, and we have contingency built into the contract. So I do not need these $468,000 tied to that project any longer. It can be moved. Well, the reason I'm asking is because uh, Harbor Elementary has been, been the star of the show for the last eight years. Just want to make sure that if we are moving funds from one project to another that we know for certain. And I'm actually going to ask you for s certainty that you can come back to us and tell us that the Hall River Elementary project is completed. I'm certain that we can move the funds from there without in, impeding on uh, this, the, the outcome of that project. Uh, it's underway now, and I feel like all is going to go well, and I will be coming back here to tell you that that project was completed successfully in a Excellent. number of months. It's, it's quite a big I was job. going to ask you about the same time frame about that, for the, to get Hall River completed would it be a little bit longer than 30 to 45 days uh, I, I think they could be on that building uh, on through the summer they they're starting now but there are multiple sections if you look at the the project uh, there are several different sections of the roof and they're going to take on different sections at, at different times all right thank you very much I, I appreciate that just want to make sure I just reason I'm asking just want to make sure that uh, that we start knocking these things out and have, uh, have a list of things that are completed so we can actually show the, the voters and taxpayers of Alamance County that we are working through this bond that we voted in 2018 to get it completed. Yes, I agree. And, and, and I do appreciate everything you've done. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rick, um, just a couple questions. The, <clears throat> these 12 schools, I just want to make sure those are the priority projects that the county identified with ABSS as part of the roofing and HVAC study? Yes. Okay. And so if, if we can reallocate $2 million, you're saying that you can add another school or another couple schools to the list. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I'm not quite sure, and I might have to uh, uh, ask Mr. Baker's uh, input on this, but I think on the roof side, we plan to go down through Southern Middle Gym, which is number nine, and then we've also planned to go uh, down yeah, through Smith with the HVAC project. But below this list, there was another page. Okay. I think on that next page was on the left side, the roof side, was the entire roof more or less at Southern Middle School. Okay. And on the right-hand side was the HVAC system project at Alexander Wilson. The funds that would be freed up in the in the um, the, the bond sale, right. if the bonds come in at the premium that right. was suggested, um, would be enough to do one or the other, one more roof or one more H back project, but not not both. But it would okay. move us on down. So we'd be adding, uh, based upon the prioritized next phase of, of, of projects. We're not going to deviate from the okay. from the HVAC study or capital improvement plan. Okay. Um, we talked about Graham High School. It was important to do the HVAC with the roof. Is the same true for B. Everett Jordan? No. Okay. Th those are not those uh, HVACs are not on the roof. No. And um, and the last thing is we talked. I think it was the last meeting. If if we do approve these uh, these the new bond or the the additional funds of the old bond issuance, um, we talked about maybe having some bids in hand by May. Are you guys working towards getting those so that once that money is in hand, those projects would be expedited as well? Um, before I respond to that, I do want to say B. Everett Jordan does have some rooftop units where we have wide span roof, but they do not need to come off okay. at that site. Um, I know we had discussed in here, it was brought up about trying to get bids in hand, but without funds in place, we're not supposed to be 
bidding projects, right. and we would have to also uh, go into design as well. So um, we we would be delayed in in moving forward until the fun, funds are in place. Is there anything that we can do to sort of get, you know, prime that pump a little bit, uh, short of getting bids in hand? I mean, is there anything that? I, I, I don't I don't think so, and I don't think that uh, the time lost in that. Uh, it is going to delay the the projects that that much. I mean, we're we're really working on a lot of priority roofs here, and so Mr. Lashley was speaking about the Hall River roof, uh, the B. Everett Jordan roof, and the Graham High roofs. When you look at those those three, that's the that's where the major leaks are. When you get to some of the other ones, the Western Middle, Western High, and Southern, they're leaking, but they're not nowhere near as bad as these others. Uh, and then the HVACs. On the right-hand column, they're all operable, uh, but a lot of them are really old. But I don't think that a, a couple of months is is going to cause cause any damage. Okay, thank you. If I can just <clears throat> excuse me, interject real quick. We had an update from the local government commission when we talked to them about issuing the bonds, and I'll let Susan explain. But I don't think we have to have the bids in hand for this latest uh, iteration of bond issuance too. Right. So what the LGC is, is allowing us to do is that based on the project list that they've been presented, they know that the funds will be spent for those projects. So we discussed at the OSC meeting that ABSS could go ahead and issue the RFP for those, um, for those roofing and HVAC projects. They would just need to wait until we had funds in hand to award the bid. And currently we're looking at selling those bonds in May and we would have funds in hand in Jan uh, June. Sorry, in June. RFPs? Well, the way we would approach this with the roofs, we to continue on. We have our selected uh, uh, engineer designer, REI, who we've, we've had in, uh, in this board. We'd stick with them for the design of roofs and, and putting roofs out to bid. Uh, and then on the uh, HVAC side, uh, through an RFQ, we would select our um, our designer if we're going to do single prime bidding or uh, a design build firm if we're going to do design build. Mr. Carter. Um, I don't have any more questions. I just want to comment how refreshing it is that we've gotten to this point working together. It's been a, a real effort to get the numbers and uh, it was so refreshing to see us find a way to save some money on some of these projects. So. It's a wonderful thing. In closing out, I want to just echo what these folks have already said. Uh, you have got things moving much, much quicker than we have been seeing in, in prior years. Uh, and we thank you. The students and the parents and the teachers all uh, thank you as well. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Motion yeah, to approve. Absolutely. I have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Just a quick, do we need any clarification on the motion on where the money comes from? Or no? Okay. Thank you. It's all included. Okay. Thanks. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Miss Barber, <coughs> Ashley Barber, oh, she's already there. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, tapped her on the shoulder as I walked in, uh, so I knew she was here, but I didn't see her <laughs> move to the podium. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Ashley Barber, and I'm the Coordinator for Health Services. I want to thank you for the opportunity to come before you this evening. Before I begin my presentation, I would like to introduce Alex Norwood. He is the Strategic Project Coordinator with the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Alex assists the county with management of the ARPA and opioid funds and provides general capacity assistance. Alex has been extremely helpful during the opioid settlement planning process and we would like to thank him for his continued support. Tonight I will be presenting the opioid settlement strategy recommendations. 
my presentation will cover overdose data from 2021 to 2023, community th feedback and themes identified, goals identified from the community feedback, opioid settlement financial overview, part one of our recommendations with evidence to support, a review of the current services and needs, part two of our recommendation, which includes the recommendation to solicit applications through the request for application process, I'll briefly discuss a justice advisory subcommittee that has been formed, and lastly, our next steps. As part of the planning process, we pulled data from NC Detect and ODMAP to help inform and guide our settlement recommendations. These are two separate databases that collect opioid and overdose-related overdose data. The data helps us to understand the impact of the opioid epidemic in Alamance County and will serve as our baseline for improvement in the years ahead. On this slide, you will see an overview of emergency department, EMS, and law enforcement data from 2021 to 2023. You can see that the emergency department opioid overdoses and law enforcement reported overdoses stayed relatively the same throughout all three years. There has been no substantial increase or decrease in these numbers. There was an increase in the emergency department unintentional med or drug overdoses, as well as in emergency medical services overdose calls. For clarity, because we pulled data from three different sources, duplications likely exist. However, this does give us a solid data set to work from moving forward. We took a, <clears throat> excuse me, we took a closer look at the emergency department opioid overdose data to learn about the demographic information of individuals seeking medical care following an opioid overdose. First, we looked at the age range of individuals experiencing opioid overdoses, which ranged from 14 to 93 years old with the greatest impacted age range being 25 to 44. 63% of these individuals were male and 37% female, and almost 80% were white. Of the 415 individuals seen in the emergency department during this three-year time frame, 39% were uninsured. More than half of the overdoses occurred in the city limits of Burlington, and 86% of these individuals arrived to the emergency department by EMS. We have to keep in mind when we look at this data that this only reflects the individuals who sought services from the emergency department. And we do know that from uh, reports from EMS and law enforcement that many refuse hospital transport following an overdose. To inform our planning and learn more about the opioid crisis in Alamance, I interviewed and solicited feedback as well as held focus groups with more than 20 different departments and organizations within our community. I also interviewed citizens in recovery, people in active addiction, and individuals in active opioid withdrawal. These interviews and focus groups helped us to have a qualitative understanding of the services available, the process to access those services, and what areas need to be expanded or implemented to address the opioid crisis. From these interviews and focus groups, 10 common themes emerged. The themes were, Community naloxone distribution is a valued and life-saving resource. Increasing access to low-barrier medication-assisted treatment for uninsured and underinsured individuals is a critical need. Our citizens need immediate access to resources following an overdose. Aftercare is an essential part of the recovery process and resources should be expanded for recovery and transitional housing. Peer support plays a vital role in navigating services and facilitating connections to care. There is a need for increased public awareness regarding the dangers of illicit drugs and press pills. A youth drug prevention and intervention curriculum for middle and high school students is necessary. Many agencies within our county are at or near capacity, resulting in wait lists and citizens having to seek treatment in other counties. Trauma-informed treatment services to address the root cause of addiction should be expanded, and that there are many pathways to recovery. Five goals were identified through community feedback. Through expansion and implementation of the approved opioid abatement strategies, we aim to decrease the fatal and non-fatal overdoses, decrease the number of incarcerated individuals with opioid and substance use disorder, expand evidence-based addiction treatment options, expand recovery support services, and increase the connections to care to improve, improve the overall health and well-being of our community. 
As of March the 6th, we have $2,907,200.27 available for allocation. These funds are a combination of payments received and interest earned. The total cost of the recommendations you will hear tonight is $2,867,060, leaving a remaining balance of $34,140.27. We are anticipated to receive an additional $590,463.92 before the end of this fiscal year. And additionally, we anticipating anticipate receiving 12.6 million between July 1st of 2024 and June 30th of 2039. You may remember from my last presentation, the approved strategies are spelled out in the North Carolina MOA. We have explored the 12 strategies under Exhibit A. Part one of tonight's recommendation includes funding for four strategies over two years. And these strategies include collaborative strategic planning, for a total of 16,000. These funds will be used to support professional development training related to evidence-based strategies for county staff, including travel-related expenses. Strategy three, recovery support services to fund two county personnel positions. One, the peer support specialist in the detention center and one recovery court coordinator. And to support the lease of Alamance Behavioral Health Center, pre previously referred to as the diversion center. The total amount of this strategy is $716,561. You may notice that fiscal year 25-26 is not included for the lease of the new center. And that is because we will recalculate the percentage at the end of 2024 once we have additional opioid use disorder data and an update will be provided to the board once we have that information. Um, the next strategy is strategy seven, naloxone distribution. Um, that is for $145,499. And these funds will be used to purchase naloxone and overdose kit materials to distribute to the community, including leave behind kits for our public safety personnel. And strategy eight is post overdose response team, $400,000. And these funds will be used to implement a post overdose response team for Alamance County. Um, we are in the planning phases of developing this team and a detailed budget for these positions will be provided to the board before July 1. Um, in addition to this presentation, a detailed budget for these strategies was provided to you. The total cost of year one and two is $1,278,060. So the evidence that we have to support um, the peer support specialist. So currently we have a peer support specialist in the detention center. It is a grant funded position um, and the grant funds are scheduled to end on September the 30th of this year. Our peer support specialist began working in the detention center in May of 2021. And since that time, she has received 374 referrals. Of those referrals, 45 had mental health concerns, 230 substance use concerns, and 99 with co-occurring mental health and substance use concerns. She has made 168 referrals to inpatient treatment and 206 referrals to outpatient treatment. In 2022, we calculated the recidivism rate for the peer support cases and it was at 36%, which means that 48 of those 132 individuals um, returned to the jail within 12 months. So that's a substantial amount of folks that didn't um, go back to the jail. As part of the grant, we do collect surveys from the participants that she works with and we see, re receive a lot of really positive feedback um, but I would like to read one specific comment um, to you all tonight regarding the peer support services. Krista is the most amazing person. She helped me get into a life-changing program for mothers and pregnant women. She was determined to make sure that it was the best program for me. Now I have been granted video calls with my boys. I gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby girl. Krista has come to both of my family court dates to support me, and I am grateful for her, the support and confidence that Krista has in me. She has helped so many people at Alamance County Detention Center, and I would hate to think what people would have done without her. I know I'm truly lucky to have her on my side. She is an important part of the solution to the substance abuse problem in the Alamance County Detention that the Alamance County Detention Center sees on a daily basis. The evidence that we have to support uh, recovery court. 
Um, it has been identified need for Alamance County. Recovery Court is the next piece in our ongoing logic model to enhance the mental health and substance use services. Our Alamance Behavioral Health Center will be opening um, this year. Um, we, the courts have implemented low-level felony dispositions in February. Our public defender's office is now in place. Our pretrial release program has expanded, and we have been granted a fifth judge um, for Alamance County. The goals of a recovery court is to reduce drug <coughs> dependencies among offenders, reduce recidivism, increase accountability of offenders, and promote interaction and utilization of resources. In 2023, the average daily jail population was 368, with an average of 12 per month on detox protocol. In February of this year, our jail medical team began tracking opioid-specific data. And in February, 32 individuals screened positive for opioids, and 29 individuals were on detox protocol related to a variety of substances. If approved, we can anticipate recovery court being up and running within six months to a year. This allows time for the coordinator to be hired and adequately trained, policies and procedures to be developed, and the fifth district court, district court judge to be in place. Evidence to support the, the lease of the Alamance Behavioral Health Center. The Behavioral Health Center will provide evidence-based recovery support services to individuals in our community suffering from problematic opioid use, substance use, mental illness, and co-occurring disorders. They will offer a variety of services that include our behavioral health urgent care, facility-based crisis, EMS, and law enforcement diversion. They will have a peer living room, a supportive employment program. They will offer substance abuse intensive outpatient and comprehensive outpatient treatment, have an on-site pharmacy, medication-assisted treatment, as well as recovery support groups. Evidence to support naloxone distribution. Naloxone is a life-saving opioid reversal medication. In 2023, approximately 1,144 kits or 2,288 doses of naloxone were distributed within our community. Having a good saturation of naloxone within the community helps to decrease the number of opioid-related fatalities. The health department collaborated with Healthy Blue and Via Health to launch the first naloxone vending machine in Alamance County, which is pictured um, here on this slide. Uh, the machine is located on the ground floor of our Human Service Center. And since the machine launched on January the 10th, 194 kits have been dispensed from our vending machine. The need to implement a post-overdose response team was, listed, was lifted from the Justice Advisory Council, as well as members of our local law enforcement. A post-overdose response team, or PORT team, is an overdose follow-up program. PORT teams can respond either immediately following an overdose or within 72 hours, and they provide connections to care, education, referrals to evidence-based treatment, and ongoing case management. Our goal through a public health and public safety partnership is to, to develop and implement a post-overdose response team for Alamance County that can be utilized by all jurisdictions. As part of our planning efforts, we looked at the current services and needs within our community. We explored programs and services that are MOA eligible, as well as other programs that offer great resources to our community but may, well, but may not fall within the guidelines of the MOA. In 2023, one of our main opioid treatment providers closed in Alamance County, which brought us down to four medication-assisted treatment providers and resulted in citizens having to go outside of county for medication management. As of this month, we do have a new uh, medication-assisted treatment provider who is serving Alamance County, so that brought us up to five. We found 14 organizations offer recovery support services, including peer support, social workers, and case management. And we currently do not have um, an early intervention specific program, post overdose response team, or addiction treatment for incarcerated individuals. The second part of our recommendation is not part of the resolution before you tonight. Based on data, community feedback, and community assessment, we are recommending soliciting applications through a request for application process. Funding from this process would be awarded for two years for the following strategies. Evidence-based addiction treatment, $300,000 per year. Recovery support, $250,000 per year. Recovery housing, $112,000 per year. Early intervention, $62,500 per year. 
and reentry programs, 70,000 per year. The two year total amount is 1,589,000. When determining the amount of funding for each strategy, we considered first the feedback we heard from the community. How frequently we heard there was a need for these services to be increased or expanded. How many agencies are currently offering, offering these services and the potential applicants. The cost associated with each strategy. So we looked at if there was licensure or certifications that were required for personnel. Possible, possible salary ranges and costs associated with implementing each program. There are many benefits to soliciting applications through an RFA process. Um, it will allow us to receive diverse, competitive, and quality applications that align with the evidence-based eligible strategies and result in impactful outcomes for, our, for the health and safety of our community. It will help to strengthen our outside agency partnerships and encourage collaboration and innovation. Potential applicants will all engage in the same standardized process, the application process and scoring process. Um, and then it will also streamline the administrative process by laying out standard project timelines, how we're gonna monitor uh, the compliance within the North Carolina MOA, our legal provisions and unallowable expenses. And as part of this recommendation, the Justice Advisory Council has approved an eight-person subcommittee to review and score applications. Um, we aim to have at least three reviewers per application. Um, the subcommittee will also discuss any scoring discrepancies prepare, and prepare any recommendations um, for the board. The subcommittee's committee members include one facilitator who is responsible for the bidders conference and Q&A sessions. The uh, facilitator will review the applications for completeness and ensure that the activities are MOA eligible. However, the facilitator will not score any applications. The facilitator will also coordinate and lead any subcommittee group meetings. The following members will review and score applications, a social worker, a community impact expert, one psychiatrist, one administrative assistant, one crime scene, one crime prevention specialist, and two community members with lived experience. If the board approves, the next step would be to sign the budget resolution before you tonight. This would authorize part one of our recommendations. Next, we seek the board's approval to begin the request for application process. If approved, the RFA will be released on March the 20th. Information regarding the post overdose response team and the results of the RFA process would come before you again on June the 17th, where a second budget, budget resolution would need to be signed and part two of the recommendations would be implemented. I'm sorry, um, the part two of the recommendations would need to be signed and then implementation of all strategies would begin on July 1st once contracts are fully executed. As part of my presentation, I have included all the resources that I utilized in preparing in case you would like to learn more. And this concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Mr. Turner. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Ashley, for a great presentation. Could you go back to the slide that introduces the RFA process? Yes. This one? Yes. Or, okay. Are we looking for one vendor to do all those things, or are we breaking that up into individual vendors? So it would really depend on applications. So if we receive, you know, um, a good uh, sampling of applications and they're really good quality applications, then we could potentially have more than one vendor for um, each strategy. Or if we have really one application that is truly very strong, um, then we would have we could have one vendor. So it depends on the applications that are received and the scoring process. Okay. Let's just take, for instance, the recovery housing strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just tell me what, what's the vision for that? What, what, do we, mm -hmm. what do we mean by that? So for recovery housing, um, part of that strategy can include supporting individuals who are leaving treatment who maybe need help with a move-in deposit. This could also support um, help with paying for utilities. It could also mean um, supporting recovery housing for an organization that provides services to individuals who may be on medication-assisted treatment. Okay. But it's not actually building something. It's, no, it's, it's not more, building. It's more cash. No, it's not building. It's it's more supporting um, the the program or supporting the individuals who are um, leaving the program. Okay. Can you go back to the slide um, 
the first budget slide of Night Near the Top? This yes. One? Mm -hmm. um, the the recovery support services person. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the question is: Do we're pretty sure we have support from the the court folks to do recovery court? Yes. So um, I actually met with our judges and our clerk clerk of court, um, Rick Champion. Um, we met with them and discussed kind of what would it look like for Alamance County to be able to have a recovery court. Yeah. Um, we, I, I discussed this recommendation with them and if we had their full support, which we did. Um, and we also discussed other ways that we can, what it's gonna take to make this recovery court be successful. Okay, um, sort of a question on the timing piece. Mm -hmm. if, if it's unlikely that we can have recovery court until we get a fifth judge, um, do, do we need to, to fund that position right now? So if we go ahead and um, fund the position, what it would do is it, one, it allows us to begin the opportunity to find that person. There's a, quite a bit of training that we would need that coordinator to go through. So the All Rise program, which is um, an evidence-based program for recovery courts, a lot of training would need to go into that. We also need to develop our policies and procedures for our recovery court. Um, so there's quite a bit of work that needs to happen on the front end as far as the planning before we're ready to fully implement. Okay. If, you, if it takes a while to hire somebody, can you reallocate the, those funds uh, because you haven't spent them there? Yes. So any funds for any of these strategies that aren't expended, they don't go anywhere. Um, so they would still be available. There's so we no, would... There's no deadline to spend them. There's no deadline. Okay. Um, it, outside of year two those wouldn't be funded by this plan would you are you anticipating using the funds that you get up through was it 2028 or something uh to, to fund these positions well you mean for the full 18 years yes 18 years yeah um so we're looking at doing it for two years at this time and then we would revisit and explore sustainability so where's the county at as far as if it could be a county funded position if there are grant funding that's available or if we would need to continue opioid funding but funding would be available potentially it would be both of those positions uh, are there three positions there's two positions two positions mm -hmm. uh, for, for 18 years the funding is potentially in the plan to do that it is available okay um the other question is the um is the is the rent for the behavioral health center in this the lease to support the lease, the lease. Mm -hmm. oh do we anticipate having space for the for either of those positions in that facility or, or to or to have physical space uh, otherwise for for this work in that facility um, so that is one of the um, topics that was brought up by the judges is the um, ask to have this recovery court position co-located in the new facility um, and so I've shared that with our deputy county manager um, and we actually met today to talk about space availability there and so we'll have other conversations that about makes that a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. and the last question if I may mr. chairman uh, can you go back to the first slide uh, yes. Do the strategies that you've out that you've spoken of tonight cover all ten of those themes? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent, Ms. Thompson. Well, uh, I'm just thrilled. 2021, Surrey, Orange, Harnett, Larry Brown, Andy Hanford, all all these all these amazing people have always supported this, and it's just just a blessing to see this finally possibly going to come to fruition because um, the business is getting bigger and bigger and more and more people are dying and it's getting younger and younger. You hear about vaping, elementary, it's just everything's coming at our young people and prevention is the best thing you can ever do for them. It's, you've got to get way ahead of this instead of reacting to what's the damage has been done. So um, Tony, Thank you. I drove you crazy, <laughs> and uh, and I just I just can't thank the brains in this, the Jack committee, everybody. And I, I just would like to um, acknowledge Chris tonight, so y'all can see the amazing person that you read about. I've worked with her a lot, going to treatment, taking people to treatment, and um, she's one of the best I've worked with. And so are you, Ashley. It's um, Alamance County is is going to do this, and I'm just so thankful. I'm just so thankful. Mr. Ashley. Well, I don't have any questions. Um, once again, Mr. Uh, Turner, but you asked the, the, the two questions that I had was was was, was, was what about Sorry. the uh, if, if this was a time elapsed thing if we're going to lose this. 
So um, thank you for your presentation. It was very, very informative. Thank you. Mr. Conn, I thought you'd forgotten about me. Hold on. Um, uh, with a master's jacket, what? Yeah, what <laughs> <I say? laughs> they forgot to put my name on the winner four. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows how those things get messed up? Um, question about the uh, the behavioral health center. Mm -hmm. I know these funds are going to be coming from the opioid settlement funds, but we also have issues with emotional and, and uh, psychological issues for some of the people brought into the jail and some of the people that will be brought to the, to the Behavioral Health Center. I think that's what we're calling it now instead of a divergent center. So is there any problem with the potential mix of who comes in if they're not using or not a user of opioids? Um, so they would still be served, so that wouldn't be um, a problem. What we want to see when we dedicate our funding is that we're seeing and the funds are being used to serve 50% or more, and if they're not 50% or more, then we tease it out by the percentage of individuals that we anticipate will have opioid use disorder. Okay. Because uh, recently, Mr. Lashley and I had an opportunity to observe a situation over at the emergency room um, I don't know if anybody's heard the term borders or not, but they're having a problem with people coming into the emergency room uh, in multiple hospitals, not just in Alamance Regional, that don't have any place to go when they're able to be released, uh, juveniles and adults. And we observed, what was it, about four juveniles on the floor being observed by, observed by five or six staff members that are ha that have to be there. So they're tying up staff in the emergency room, they're tying up bed space in the emergency room, and this is gonna give them an option, an option, another option to have a place for at least a temporary location for some of these situations. And some of these have been there since I think he said October of 23. Um, I mean, it's, we don't. We've got an opioid problem, but we also have some other problems in the county. So I'm glad to see this is going to be able to help it. Let me mention to all those in TV land and in the audience here, uh, we county commissioners receive a packet which is available to all of you. Typically, the Wednesday or the early Thursday before our Monday meetings. Uh, and so we are looking at packets of material, uh, both on computer and in print. Uh, but you can do exactly what we're doing. Uh, the only things that you would not see would be employment issues uh, and closed sessions and so forth. You'd see that the closed session is on the agenda, but you wouldn't see those items because of typically what they are. Uh, but you can go online, and this lady put together a wonderful packet mm -hmm. for us, which we all had the opportunity. Uh, and so you think we're all smart, but we've cheated. <laughs> <laughs> we saw the materials beforehand, uh, and we really appreciate what you're doing, and the Diversion Center is gonna be major. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I just add to what you're saying? Um, I was over at the Diversion Center last night. I went toward it, it was just spectacular. And upstairs looks like it's pretty ready. Downstairs isn't. Um, still, got sheetrock, got a lot of stuff to do. And I'm, with contractors, that's nothing. Um, but the email I got today is very concerning about a 14-year-old that's uh, everybody's starting to rename people that are in crisis different names. You know, newcomers, boarders, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, he's a 14-year-old kid. And for him to be in the emergency room or the ARMC living for two months, I have real serious issues with that. Because um, the thing about a virgin center, as great as this is going to be, we've got to have somewhere to send them. And um, that's a limited thing, especially with youth. We've got 19 group homes for youth in this county. And many times I get notified that um, when they act up, which I don't know why anybody would be surprised from a kid in a group home that's been booted and gone through the court system and stuff like that, that they wouldn't act up with the trauma that they've probably witnessed and experienced themselves. And the fact that they are taken or they run 
and they take them to the AR, MC, emergency room, or any emergency room, and they're left because the group home doesn't come pick them back up. I got serious issues with that because group <clears throat> homes are it's supposed to be a home thing, and there are really good ones, and there are really bad ones, just like everything in this world. So um, I'm going to get with this dude when he gets back from D.C. and go over there because I've I seen a holes in the wall where he just showed out, which I'm sure he does if he's traumatized and everything else. Um, I, I can't say enough about this, about the mental health. It's just not about the jail and re-diverting people. They're walking the streets. Mm -hmm. um, I know the girl that wrote the letter about Krista. I've worked with her. It is absolutely broken, damaged, and it's really hard to get back to just being like you used to be. Is there a such thing as used to be? And um, drugs come in and say, if you just take me, I'll help you forget everything. And that's such a lie. That is such a lie of this drug business. And, um, and we all know where the opioid problem came from was the prescription pad. You know, and then we play and get out stuff of the, you know, medicine cabinet at home. It's just out of control. It's literally out of control. And it's going to take a whole lot more than a bunch of wealthy people that want to donate to this or a bunch of politicians or a bunch of other executives in the world to fix this because the, ha the family's busted. And that's the issue. You see that walk in our schools because of what's going on in the family. And if your family's not right, nothing's right. And we're seeing it. And we are seeing the outcome of all that. And um, that diversion center is, is a monster. I mean, and I mean that the biggest compliment is absolutely gorgeous. And um, as a matter of fact, when I was there, I ran into a homeless lady that was in the back um, eating her dinner because she was sitting back there because it was lit and it was safe. And uh, I talked to her, and um, it's just everywhere you look. And so we can't convince ourselves that one little thing we're going to do here is going to really save the world. It's, it's going to take so much, and you have to believe in it to know that you've got to do whatever it takes. But a 14-year-old, he's just a kid who's been through hell, probably, and this is why he's where he is. And, uh, and we owe him to get him back on the track and really support him because um, I want him to make it. I want him to lead this world and lead it right. So that's it. Commissioners, any other comments? Quick question, Mr. Chairman. Mr. York, do we, do we have a general sense of where we can cut a ribbon on that uh, Behavioral Health Center? Thank you, Craig. Thank you. They have not set a final date. The last update that we heard at the Jack meeting was that they would be opening, hope, hope to open in May. And then from there, we could schedule a ribbon opening once it's a little further along. I think maybe we need to start talking about when we might schedule that, and, mm -hmm. and maybe that'll help keep people in focused on the uh, sure. on getting that thing complete. Thank you. Yeah, I drove through there Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, did not go in the building as as Pam. I apparently. looked in the windows. I didn't, okay. know. <laughs> I didn't do it. It was that. dark. I was like uh, trespassing, probably. But it's really <laughs> coming along, and workers were there. I was there after five o'clock, and they were still working. So, I mean, we appreciate it. Anything else? One other comment. With one of the things we learned, um, one of the part of the problem we're dealing with is there was one individual that had been released from the emergency, not re released from the emergency room, went out. No, excuse me, I'll get this right. They went to jail, and the jail couldn't handle them, so they were sent to the emergency room. They, they assaulted a nurse in the emergency room. Police came in, arrested them, sent them back to the jail. They got released from the jail. It's a loop. As soon as they get back to the emergency room, they're assaulting somebody in the facility and they turn right away. They get arrested again. As soon as they get released from jail, they get a whatever that order is, protective order, I guess, and sent back to the emergency room. And then they go through the assault process. It's just a loop. So there's a lot of things we've got to try and deal with here with this one and process. Just had a 14 year old arrested for attempted murder out of Hall River. Mm -hmm. So that's a kid. You know. 14 years old. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. That presentation was all that stack of papers. <laughs> <laughs> and you can be on the front end of that by looking at our website. Okay. Mr. Baker. I'm going to introduce.
Yeah, I'll introduce this item, commissioners. Um, at the board retreat, we last spoke about the courthouse project, and we have brought before you a uh, potential contract to continue some work with CRA Associates, who has done the design previously. And so this uh, opportunity would be um, to present uh, and design a scaled down version, much smaller in scope and size than what you have previously looked at doing. So that's what uh, we're estimating to do. There's a budget projected of approximately $18,000 would have to be funded through fund balance. And we wanted to see if the board would like to move forward uh, to explore this scaled back version. Motion to approve. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Four one. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you. It passes four to one. Thank you. County manager. Um, commissioners, I think you heard from our, our clerk this week. We are trying, or last week, we are trying to schedule a special work session uh, for your proposed capital improvement plan. We've been looking at April 22nd or 29th. Seems like there was some mixed feelings about those dates. Uh, the majority of you could do the 29th at 10. So wanted to make sure that that could work. There are a lot of projects, there's a lot of uh, funding commitments, and we felt like having a separate work session would give you a little more time to ask some questions and explore those costs. Right, give us a date again. Uh, April 29th at 10 a.m. It would be in here. And it would Somebody only be for the CIP, money. your capital improvement plan, um, for a work session. You know it is you're a Monday. I'm not going to be here. It, it I is just found that out. Oh, Hard I thought you'd confirm that date with Tori. <laughs> you can't Pleasure do that. Carter, I think that was the one that you preferred. Yeah. I didn't have that on my calendar. Oh. Family stuff, most of the time, doesn't get on my calendar until the last minute. So, Not because I'm brilliant, but there are things you remember. That is William Shakespeare's birthday. <laughs> Don't even ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Did not know that. <laughs> what time? The 22nd is like. an option as well, if that suits the board better. Those are the two April meeting that, Mondays. That 22nd that you don't is a Friday, and I think we're leaving that Friday, but I didn't know. Uh, the so it's a Monday. So it's okay, a we're leaving on Monday. I I got I got to fix my calendar, I guess. <laughs> are you doing the 29th or the 22nd? What are you talking about? I believe the majority had told Tori the 29th was better. If is that that's... better for you, Steve, the 29th? Can you do the 22nd? You said how long will it last? I would anticipate. A couple hours? An hour to two hours. Twenty second is better for me. We can do the 29th. We can do the 29th. <laughs> okay. I, I can't. I'll do my best. Oh, 20 seconds better for you. Yeah. So 20 seconds is better for you, correct? It's yeah. All right, 20 seconds. Okay. I can do either. <laughs> I'm so either. glad I announced that day for us. <laughs> Miss Lashley, 20 seconds. You just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's 20, move it to the 22nd. 22nd at 10 a.m. Okay. in this room. CIP work session. <laughs> Thank you. That's the date I picked first. <laughs> That's one. That works best for me, too. Okay. I have something down there. All right. Any other? That's all I had. Thank you. All right. Uh, commissioner comments. Uh, I would just like to welcome Dr. Harrison and uh, look forward to working with him and ABSS School Board to move the county forward. Thank you. I'll ditto that comment. Mr. Lash? I tend to agree. Thank you, um, Chairman. Um, Mr. Harrison, thanks for uh, doing this for us <laughs> again. <laughs> um, I don't really have any other things. I just want to uh, just want everyone to get all happy that spring is, is here and uh, <laughs> Easter's <laughs> two weeks and I'm looking forward to April 22nd. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm skipping over you, sir, Miss Thompson. <laughs> I'm good. Um, 
I, I'm glad Craig mentioned that about um, the diversion center. I really would like us to have a date that we could really work for to open because we seem to be going, and I know things happen. You just get behind stuff, doesn't come in. But if we could kind of get something in stone, I think that would make everybody feel a lot better because there's a lot of great things that need to go in there to serve our community. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, I do, I'm not gonna lie, I've got some questions about um, some of the things that Mr. Barry Joyce talked about commercial. I'm not an expert for sure, but I would like some answers to that. Um, I was at Harbor Inn one night and a really special man come up to me that I really respect a lot. And out of just that, I'm not gonna mention his name, but he had said to me that um, he had talked to the four and that um, y'all had kind of got together and decided, whatever that means, that you were wanting to subcontract or hire someone that would be able to do these commercial appraisers the way that they, whatever you do them. And, um, and I, I just want to make sure that our tax department is always doing everything there because they've got some really awesome people down there working in it. And a really awkward thing is um, I had a mother. I was coming back from the ARC and the Creation Museum um, right after the election. And on that Friday, I had a mom to call me, and she said that her son was in Mebbin Library, and he's seven, and he was with his older brother, who's about 15. And they were in the young adult section looking for something for a project. <laughs> and... Um, a 14, 15 year old is a lot different than a seven or eight year old when it comes to things they can see. So um, she sent me a picture of this book and, and listen, I am all for the public library. I'm gonna stand up there all day long. Every shelf in there can tick somebody off of what's sitting on the shelf because of everybody's views and life. That's just what it is. But it is freedom of speech and I appreciate that. And I want our libraries to have everything that our public needs. But I also want to make sure that they are appropriately placed where little, little sets of feet can't get a hold of them. And this is the book, and and I'm not going to embarrass you like I could, but I'm not. Um, it's it's about things that you know you talk to your children about when they're growing up because it really is kind of like a parent thing that we're supposed to do, but that seems to be put on the school nowadays. So um, one page has got um, all kind of um, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> It's got all kind of sexual positions, and they're in like a cartoon, Nickelodeon kind of thing, but it's very obvious what the body parts are. With, with that ever, whatever. And then the second one has got a picture of every kind of anatomy that you can imagine, man, woman, boy, girl, everything. And we all know we've got anatomy, we all know that. And then the next one is just, um, it's just a lot of real interesting things that this young kid saw. And I don't care if this book is in a library. I just would like it to be an appropriate place so a little six-year-old, seven-year-old boy didn't get his hands on it. And um, that can happen anywhere. They can be placed anywhere. But when I do have a parent that calls me about a book that her kid got his hands on, and it's way over his head, and he's looking at it, and this family just, we've had issues with different things before, and we get called as commissioners, and that's what we're called for. And I just want to bring for attention, I'm on the library committee, and I support our libraries, and I know they go through struggles with stuff like this and other things, and we just have to just do it the right way, and I just really want to make sure anything this explicit, and it is, that um, we're just really careful that maybe it needs to be higher up on the shelf. So little sets of eyes can't get a hold of it because it's purple, it's pretty, and it's attractive, and it would be the first thing because it's got little kids on the outside of it. Sometimes that's, that's just the way it is. It's a million copy bestseller, newly revised and updated, and I'm not picking on this. It's, it's probably very educational for the right audience and the right age, but we just have to be real careful. It just seems like every time we turn around, things are getting younger and younger and younger, and um, we just, I just want kids to play on the playground and just be as normal as possible. I think they deserve that. So that's about it. Mr. Chairman. Yes, it's my turn now. Did you check that out of the, our library? No, my husband did. Because he's got a library card. I don't have one. Okay. <laughs> and it but come it, from the Graham. I went to Mebbin to check, and it was not out, checked out. It just was on the shelf. They didn't know where it was. It wasn't at Burlington. And um, so I sent Craig, because he has a library card, he reads all the time. Uh, he, he was real concerned about checking that book out. But anyway, <laughs> Graham, and, uh, and he got it, and they were nothing but kind and nice about it. It is not an appropriate book for the right age audience. That's not what I'm saying. But we just have to be really careful where some of these things are placed so that, you know, kids can find things. That's why they do, and it, this, this child, his mom was really upset. It's, she would think she would be. And, um, and that's, it's just one of those things that happens. And I'm sure it happens all the time, but whenever I get a call about it, 
I'm going to I'm going to inquire about it just to make sure that just, we're just really careful where the books are placed. Kind of like the candy at Walmart at the register, they do that for little hands because they don't want a scene and they'll let your kids get whatever because you're not going to let them scream and cry. It's all, you know, it's just hey, marketing. You're, you're the commissioner on that board, correct? I am. So I uh, plead with you to do something about well, it. Well, we've, we're, we've got a mixture of all kind of members, which I think is really good because you can't be all the same. And, um, and there's some that they wouldn't like this and some would say, well, that's okay. My concern is the placement. I just want it to be not where, you know, a six-year-old go, whoa, what is this? Because if you look at that certain ages, you, you got it. It's no big deal. But if you don't, you're, it's, you're not going to know what it's just. We just got to be really careful. A lot of kids are getting things pumped at them younger and younger and younger, and we just need to be real careful with that. Can't it's control the world. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, you're fine. Uh, as Ms. Thompson's pointing out, um, first of the year, um, yeah, I'll point as chairman at this point, uh, board members to be on the various committees. And so thank goodness you're on that board and hopefully can make some changes. Well, Thanks. if I hadn't have been on the board, I'd have still done this because a mom calls me, she's upset, she has good reason, but at the same sense, it's a great book for the right age appropriate person. And um, I mean, it's very well, it's just. <sighs> so I assume that'll be on your next board meeting. <laughs> well, I've already With said it and I'll, I'll call Susanna, she's not in town and, and I don't think there'll be a big problem. It's just, you know, we just, Every time you turn around, it's something going after a young person. Thank you. As, Thank you Chairman. as we can see, she's trying to make a difference. So, and on that board, she can. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I might point out that I think it was about two and a half, maybe three years ago, we had a similar situation. Again, uh, we get accused yeah. of being sometimes maybe book burners. We're not book burners, but appropriate location of materials. Uh, there was some inappropriate material placed right at the entrance to the children's reading section for an older group of children that was right out in the front. Yet the younger children had to walk by it and would see it as they walked into the children's section. It just was inappropriate location. Yeah. More members other than me, anything else at this point? I just want to say thank you, school board, Thank you for your attendance, uh, Mr. Hook. Again, I'd never have your job. You have an impossible job, but you're doing a really good job. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Harrison, we're so pleased to have you on board. Uh, school board, you're doing your job. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, at this point, county attorney. Nothing for me substantively, but I do have a couple of closed session motions to propose to the board. Um, first, for simple Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A5, I would ask the board to attend a closed session in order to instruct the public, public body staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of public body in negotiating the potential purchase of real property described as parcel numbers 145816 and 145817 each owned by Alamitz Farmers Mutual Fire Insurance and parcel numbers 145839 and 145790 presently owned by Bank of America Corporation for use as additional office space as existing or for existing county functions. I would also ask the board move into closed session under the same general statute provision uh, to establish or to instruct the body's staff or negotiating agents concerning the position to be taken by or on behalf of the public body in negotiating the amount of compensation or other material terms of an employment contract or other proposed employment agreement. That's all I have for you tonight. Make the motion we go into closed session. Second. Second. Thank you. <laughs> we have two seconds. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? We're in closed session. Thank you. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We have a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.
you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.